Well, hey there, everybody. I'm so glad that you're with me today. We're going to have an awesome time. I'm going to jump into a subject that I am super duper passionate about today, which is living life uh, from a holistic perspective and really learning to thrive uh, holistically, spirit, soul, and body uh, as God intended, not living a life that's struggling and, and segmented. Maybe that's been the life you've lived in the past or you've seen others do that before. I know for me, that was my life for a long time. I lived a life that was segmented uh, in my spiritual life over here and my art life over here and my relationship life over here and my work life over here and money over there. And everything was so segmented. And it was a real struggle. It kind of felt like juggling balls in the air all the time. <laughs> and I can remember so distinctly when things began to shift for me in my life, uh, really centered around this whole idea of reimagining my life and reimagining God's design for my life, God's purpose for my life as a holistic person. Now, what does that mean? Well, instead of living this life, like I was just saying, that is, that is segmented, your spiritual life, art life, business life, relationship life, business life, money life, you know, all these sort of things, all in these different segments and trying to manage them all separately, the Lord began to show me that all of me got saved when I got saved, <laughs> that all of me came into the kingdom. All right. Through the blood of Jesus, when I begin to, to enter into that, that new reality through salvation. And guess what? Now, in every area of my life, there's a new reality for me to begin to walk in, for me to begin to experience life in. And see, here's the beautiful thing about the kingdom. <laughs> you and I can either step into the new reality of everything that God has for us, all right? Or we can continue to live in the old reality and wonder why we have this promise of a new reality and yet we're not seeing it in our life. After having mentored thousands upon thousands of artists all over the world, <laughs> it just from about just about every Christian denomination and movement and stream from around the world, evangelical, liturgical, charismatic, Pentecost, it does not matter, all right? Most artists, most believers have a major disconnect when it comes to, I see the promise of God, I know I've been made new, and yet I am not seeing the reality of that in my life. Here's the reason. The reason is you're seeing the new reality, but you're living out of the old reality. And you will never, ever, ever see the reality of the kingdom show up in your life living out of an old pattern. That is trying to do things yourself, trying to do things, quote unquote, for God, <laughs> trying to be a good Christian, you know, <laughs> trying to trying to be faithful on your own, all that sort of thing. That will never, ever, ever yield the the manifested results and fruit of the kingdom in your life only living from a holistic perspective where everything that you're doing spirit soul and body your business your art your spiritual life your relationships your finances uh, all of that when all that begins to come together my friend listen <laughs> that's when the kingdom begins to flow uh, in your life and so for us as artists i think this is so so important because again as i look out over the landscape of, of artists who are believers you either see artists who are really great at the spiritual side of things love god in the studio creating very passionate about what they do and yet uh, don't have maybe the skill or the business side of things and then on the other side there's maybe artists who are man they're type a gung-ho they're out there marketing and trying to do it and all this kind of thing but maybe they don't have the spiritual connection that they really desire or maybe their work is not as great as it as it could be and all of those have different you know a, a lot of baggage around each one of them i've written about all that extensively in all my books and we talk about it a lot in the mentoring program but suffice it to say 
there is this dynamic that I call convergence, all right, where when your spiritual life and your art development life and your business life, that is being able to flow in the marketplace confidently, all right, when all those begin to come together, that is when I see not only in my own life, that's been my story all these years, but I see that in so many of the artists that I mentor. When, when, when we begin to bring all of that together, all of a sudden, it's like double doors of favor open up in their life. Why? Just because God got to be in a good mood? No. <laughs> it's because they start operating in the way the kingdom was designed to operate. All right. You know, it's not that, that uh, it's just an interesting way to think about this. It's not when, you know, you come into the kingdom, it's like God changes everything that you're focused on in your life. More than likely for most of us, I find God actually begins to, uh, you know, really breathe into, if you will, to really uh, resonate with, if you will, the thing that he put inside of us that had been laying dormant. You know, it's interesting when you look at, uh, you know, the disciples who were walking along with Jesus and, and one of them says, oh gosh, I got to pay my taxes. You know, and what does he say? Jesus says, well, go down there and, and get a coin out of the fish's mouth. All right. And go pay, you know, go pay your taxes. Well, what was that about? It's an interesting dynamic when you think about that this guy was already a fisherman. And Jesus said, go and to the fish. That is, go do the thing. <laughs> go do the thing that you have loved all these years. Go do the thing that you're naturally good at. Go do the thing that you understand best. Go do that. But now when you do it under my instruction, guess what's going to happen? All of a sudden, boom, provision. Same thing when Jesus is on the beach. All right, he's cooking breakfast for the guys and they're out there you know in the boat and they've been fishing all night and nothing's coming in all right and what happens jesus says hey throw the boat you know throw the don't throw the boat <laughs> throw the net on the other side well then what happens when they do again when they do the thing that they have been gifted and passionate to do when they do the thing that's been in their heart when they do the thing that that god had given them influence and when they do that thing in the marketplace but now under the direction of the Holy Spirit, under the anointing, under the guidance of a now word inspired by the Holy Spirit, guess what? All of a sudden, boom, <laughs> what? Major provision, major release, overflowing abundance. So a lot of times when people think about a holistic approach to walking in the kingdom, they think, oh, I got to lay everything down that I've been doing so I can go be a missionary in Africa or I can go do this or do that thing that seems totally outside of you know my area of expertise. No, I would say to you that God wants to uh, breathe life into and resonate with even more the thing that he's designed you with, which for most of us is being an artist in his kingdom. And what happens is when you begin to bring all of that, not just a part of you, not just your quote unquote spiritual life, <laughs> but when you begin to bring all of you, your art, your business, your finances, your marketing, your strategic partnerships, your uh, relationships, when you begin to bring all of that under the Lordship of Jesus and say, Father, all of this is me. All of this is what you've given me, uh, you know, uh, influence over you've given me responsibility for now i want to bring this to you and i'm asking you to fill this and use this for your glory and lead me as i'm creating as i'm selling as i'm meeting people as i'm applying for shows as i'm walking in the marketplace as i'm talking to people about commissions as i'm looking for a studio space as i'm uh, being in that show as you do that guess what now all of a sudden the holy spirit begins to infiltrate and flow through you. That's what it, that's the difference in living a segmented life. That is spiritual life over here. And then thanks God, but I'm going to go and do all this other stuff over here by myself in my own strength, in my own ideas, like everybody else is doing it, try to figure it out. So I can quote unquote, honor the Lord <laughs> so that I can quote unquote, be a good Christian so that I can, quote, unquote, you know, make uh, make good Christian art. No, 
God wants all of you. <laughs> all of you is a son. All of you is a daughter. Everything that God put in there inside of you is for his glory and for his purposes. That's what it means to live in the fullness of the kingdom. And the Bible says what? Every place you place your feet. Every place we place our feet, we're taking the kingdom because the kingdom lives where? Inside of us. But it only begins to manifest. I've just found this in my own life. And again, in the lives of the thousands and thousands of people I've had the great privilege to mentor over the years. When we begin to treat all of this holistically, all of a sudden, that is a big, big part of the release that happens. All right. Now, I want you to think about just as you're listening to this right now. Think about how life could be different. If every opportunity were not opportunities that you had to come up with, but all you had to do was receive the opportunities that God brought your way. All you had to do is recognize and receive those. Think about instead of having to create momentum in your life, <laughs> instead of having to create all these buyers, create all this, create all this, get all this stuff going, turning it out, turning it out, turning it out. Instead of having to do that by the flesh, imagine being able to come into agreement with what God's already doing in and through your life, in and, in and through your generation, in and through your city. Imagine coming into agreement with those and flowing with what he's already doing. Imagine instead of begging God for clients and wondering why I'm not selling art and why I can't find anybody to, to buy my art and all this kind of stuff. Imagine being able to operate and create in a place of rest, knowing that when you do, God is the one that's going to begin to bring divine appointments so that your art can speak, so that your life can speak, so that relationships can be built. I mean, that's the way the kingdom works. That's the normal flow. And I'm just telling you, there's that can absolutely be your reality this year. <laughs> that can absolutely, how do I know that? Because it's, it's the reality that I've been walking in for a long time. It's the reality that I've been helping artists in the mentoring program walk in for a long time. But it takes a shift. It takes a shift in the way that you have been thinking and creating and living your life. It just does. Because you can't, like I said at the very beginning, you can't get kingdom fruit in your life living out of the flesh and trying to make it happen on your own. You just, you just can't do it. Listen, this has been uh, this last season of my life. I was just reflecting, you know, these last few days on the decade and uh, wow, <laughs> this has been, I think the most incredible experience of my life. And, and Tanya, even as we were talking the other day, it's like, wow, to think about the thousands upon thousands of artists now who are getting what it really means to walk in the fullness of who God is calling to be, to see transformation happening, to be embracing this process. Oh, it's incredible. So I, I want to give you, as we're, as we're starting out this year, I want to give you, I don't know, five, six, seven things that I think will be really, really key in helping you to Number one, realize that you are, you know, supposed to be walking in a holistic way. And number two, understand how to do it. All right. So number one, I would say uh, is this, and this would be probably one of the most uh, important things I would say uh, <laughs> in all of this. All right. Number one, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 20, recognize, all right, that you are not your own but you have been bought with a price. Listen, this is not your story. This is not my story. As much as all this feels like your story, as much as all this may feel like my story, my responsibility, I got to make it happen. It's not. You have been bought with a price. You are part of a story that is much, much greater than just you and just me. Listen, you may have heard me say this before, but in 2009, God called me out of a dead sleep to raise up an army of artists to reveal his glory in the earth. That's not about me. That's about a movement that God is, is, is raising up all over the world. 
All right. I just happen to be in a leadership role in that, but it's not my story. It's his story. And listen, in your life, when you can begin to embrace the fact that, wow, okay, this is big. God's put something big inside of me. I'm a part of something bigger. I'm a part of a wider community. I'm a part of a movement that the Holy Spirit is releasing all over the earth. And if I don't take my place, there's going to be something missing. That is huge. It changes your perspective. All right. Number two, realize that you are a child of God and the kingdom lives inside of you right now. (laughs) And you've got all the rights and privileges of a son. You've got them all right now. And you have need of nothing. Listen, one of my favorite portions of scripture, Second Peter, verses, you know, uh, chapter one, verse three, four, five, six, all of that, you know, where he says, I've already given you everything that you need for life and godliness. And you participate in the divine nature through what? The precious promises of God. You've already been given. That's not something you have to beg for. That's not something you have to to cry for. That's nothing you have to war for. That's not something you have to, to, to beg and intercede for. No, it's only something that you have to what? Receive. Because Jesus has already made it possible through his work on the cross. And now it lives inside of you. So your job is not to beg and plead. Your job is simply to align with the new reality that's inside of you. That studio that you need the money, the finances that you need, the opportunities to create and sell your art, the community that you've been looking for, all of that, guess what? It's already there. The Bible says he's already given you everything that you need. So you've just not come into an intersection point with it yet. But as you align with the truth of the kingdom, then guess what? You begin to see those things come into reality in your life. I see it every day. I see it in my life. I see it again in the lives of the people in the mentoring program. It's incredible when they begin to get the reality, when you begin to see this reality change in your life, all of a sudden the kingdom starts showing up. All right. So number one, recognize you're not your own. Number two, you've already been given all things. Number three, all right, this is so important. One of those life verses for me, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not into your own understanding in all of your ways, acknowledge him and what he will make your path straight so what's the key trust in the lord with all your heart and what lean not into your own understanding you have to and i have to purposefully disconnect purposefully disconnect from trying to make things happen on your own you have to purposefully lean into trusting and aligning and creating an atmosphere in your life that is one that cultivates the reality of the kingdom. What does that look like? Instead of, you know, when a situation comes up in your life and when an opportunity comes up, when a problem comes up, instead of running to that favorite coping mechanism that you've developed over the years, or instead of running to striving and trying to make it happen or going to ask your best friend what they think or, or, you know, your mom or dad, what they think or, or whoever it is. No, you run to the Lord. Instead of spending three days in that favorite coping mechanism that you've developed and getting depressed and anxious and I don't know why this happened and all that kind of stuff. No, you start turning on worship music and you, and, and you raise a hallelujah (laughs) in the presence of your enemies. And you begin to declare the word of the Lord that says, God, you set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I know my situation doesn't look like it right now in the natural, but I know my reality in the kingdom. What am I doing? I'm purposefully disconnecting from the way that I used to live, from the way that I used to operate, and I'm purposefully connecting with a new reality that is the kingdom of God based on his word with the knowledge that is living inside of me and that his Holy Spirit is giving me grace in that process. That is huge. That is huge. So many people think, listen, so many people try to live life on autopilot and think, well, God knows what I need. 
God knows that I need a blessing. God knows that I need money. God knows that I need this. Now, listen, <laughs> he's already given you those things. So the Bible says, you know, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to what? To search it out. That as you and I are on the journey, on the adventure with the Holy Spirit, listening and trying and moving and looking and, well, that didn't work, but what about this? It's in that journey with him that we are made, we were brought into maturity and that we begin to, to see that new reality manifested. It's in the journey. You can't just sit there and wait. Well, God knows what I need. I just wait for him to, to bless me. And that's not the way the kingdom works. You can't do it. The Bible says that without faith, what? It's impossible to please God. That is, you've got to see those things that are not yet as though they were. All right. That is the thing that God, the thing that you've shown me. I don't see it yet in my physical life, but I know because you've shown it to me and I know because you promised it to me and I know because it's in your word that it's true. And so I'm going to see those things that are not as though they were. And I'm going to begin to walk as if those things were in my physical reality right now, because I know they are in the spirit. So I'm going to begin to walk in a way that they're true now. That is so, so important. And it leads me into kind of number four, which is this whole idea of shift into or shift away from, again, trying to make things happen on your own or just waiting on God, shift into receiving everything that God has for you out of a place of gratitude. Listen, when you begin to operate like that, all of a sudden you're not begging God, God, why doesn't this happen? Why can't I go to that conference? Why can't I have the money that I need? Oh, this sickness that I've had for all these years. That kills me when people, I just, oh, it frustrates me so much when people talk about my cancer, my epilepsy, my diabetes, all that. You, listen, it's not yours. <laughs> it's only yours as long as you hold on to it. Listen, I don't, I don't want it. I don't need it. <laughs> You know, I, listen, there may be something going on in your body right now, but that doesn't mean that it's God's best for your life. There may be a relationship that, that you're walking through right now that is really, really difficult, but it does not mean that it's God's best for your life. All right. And so you have to begin to walk in a way that is thankful, that is filled with gratitude, knowing that the truth of God's reality is on its way to show up in your life, in the physical realm. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, what? Therefore, when you pray, believe that you have received it. That means believe that you've already received it. Believe that it's already done. You're not, you're not begging God, God, would you please? I want to go to that thriving Christian artist. I want to go to that gathering of artists so bad. Oh, I want to be in the mentoring program so bad. I just don't know why everybody else can do it, but I can't do it. I don't know. Why. Oh. No, no, you can't be like that. You begin to say, Father, thank you. Thank you that you put this on my heart. Thank you, Lord, that the finances are coming. Now, Lord, show me where to harvest my provision in line with my assignment. Lord, show me how to harvest the finances that I need. Show me how to agree with you in ideas in the studio. Show me the marketing opportunities that you have for me. That's, that's, how, that's how you begin to shift your mind. What? Going from begging and, and pleading to gratitude. Lord, thank you that it's already done. Thank you that you've already got a divine solution. Thank you that you've already got a roommate for me at that conference. Thank you that you've already, see what I mean? It changes when you begin to, to operate out of a place of gratitude. Also, one of the other huge, huge, huge things that, uh, again, I see this all the time in the mentoring program. So many Christian artists, again, that are kind of living in that struggling and segmented kind of life, which is very typical. One of the biggest things that I see uh, them struggle with is loneliness. That's one of the reasons why this big, free Facebook group that we have out here, the Thriving Christian Artists group, almost 19,000 people in it now. That's one of the big reasons people get in that group. They've never known that there were other artists who were Christians that were, that were wanting the same things. Well, guess what? We see that even take off <laughs> exponentially in the mentoring program because you're actually coming together with other artists that are seriously 
pursuing their call, that are seriously investing in each other, not just on the surface, not just a few Facebook posts every now and then, but I mean, really investing with it, with each other, <laughs> praying for each other, mastermind calls, uh, monthly meetings, getting together in their, in their local area, live events. I mean, listen, I can't tell you the level of acceleration that begins to happen in people's lives when they embrace community. When we begin to be real with each other and say, man, this is a challenge I've got going on in my life, or this is a situation I've been working on for a lot of years and I can't get breakthrough. Anybody been through that before? And listen, that's right out of God's word. James 5, 16, confess your sins to one another and what? You'll be healed. I've all I've said this for years. I said it in Unlocking the Heart of the Artist when I wrote it 10 years ago. The level that you will invest in real community is the level to which you will experience healing in your life. There's a measure, listen, there's a measure of healing that is greater than what you have been experiencing by yourself that will come through community, through all, through real community, all right? Godly community, community that's led well, community where everybody's in, <laughs> all right? Everybody's invested, everybody's showing up. There's real acceleration that begins to happen. And that's one of those ways, again, to move from living that struggling, segmented life to stepping into a holistic, thriving, uh, you know, reality as, as an artist. All right. And then I also think about just, you know, Exodus 31 intentionally, intentionally, all right, developing and pursuing your calling in regards to skill development. You know, I don't know if you figure this out yet, but there are some things in life that you are never going to experience unless you pay for them. There's a, there are uh, classes right now. I'm, I'm just, you know, so just for example, for me, I've been, I've been a basket maker for 25 years. This last year and a half, God started moving on me to paint. I'm still making a living from my, my baskets and all that and love that. But I'm, I'm starting to create room in my life and studio to, to paint. Well, guess what? I've started investing in classes. I've started investing in materials. I've started investing in, in mentoring relationships and that sort of thing. And guess what? It costs money, but, but here's the beautiful thing. <laughs> it's not just costing money like I'm throwing money out there. No, it's an investment in myself and in the calling that God has put on my life. See, even David said, he said, he said I'm not going to offer the Lord that which costs me nothing. And I want to let you know, whether it's skill development, whether it's a mentoring relationship, whether it's going to a conference, whether it's learning from somebody in your local area, whether it's buying supplies, whatever it is, there will be a moment and probably multiple moments in your journey where the Lord will ask you, hey, are you really serious about this or are you just kind of playing around the edges? Because remember, this is not your story. This is my story, the Lord would say. <laughs> this is my story. I'm raising up an army of artists. I'm raising up a movement of people all over the earth to release my beauty and my nature, to be ambassadors of transformation. And are you serious about this? Or are you just still treating this kind of like something on the side? Because listen, the degree to which you are willing to invest in your journey and invest in community, and invest in taking hold of your mind and your heart, and aligning them purposefully with who God has for you to be in life. That is the degree to which you will see the reality of the kingdom manifested in your life. And again, I will say it just like I said at the beginning of this, you and I have a choice. You can choose to do it, everything that I've talked about today, and see the fullness of God manifest in your life like never before, or you can be saved all day long and live a substandard existence in the kingdom. You're still going to heaven. Jesus still loves you, but you're living, listen, friend, you're living a substandard existence. You're not living in the fullness of who God has for you of all the things that he has, has planned for your life. I don't know about you, but I want to see everything and experience 
everything that God has for me in my life. And listen, I'm the first one to say, I fall down, I mess it up, I don't do it right, but guess what? I've learned to get back up. The righteous fall seven times, but get back up and keep moving toward the goal. Like Paul said, I press on toward the goal. <laughs> I press on to the goal. And that's my prayer for you today too, that that this would inspire you, that God's word would inspire you, that the Holy Spirit, even right now as you're listening to this, would inspire you to say, yeah, this is my year. This is the year that I'm going to step up and be a part of the movement that God, you're raising up all over the world. I want to, I want to take my place in this army of artists and live that holistic, beautiful kingdom filled life that you designed for me. Father, in Jesus name, I pray Lord right now that God, as people are listening, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would awaken their heart to the truth of your reality now living inside of them as a believer. God, your kingdom, the fullness of God living inside of us through the blood of Jesus that was poured out for us through the reality of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. God, thank you for that. And Lord, I pray today that you would awaken people's hearts to this new reality. God, that you would begin to draw us to the things that you have for us, that you begin to guide our steps, order our path, awaken our dreams. God, I just speak right now to dreams, to dormant places in people's heart. God, that they be awakened in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Man, I hope this has encouraged you. It's encouraged me. I, I love I love sharing like this because it it, <laughs> it encourages me. I have to go back and listen to it again. I'm like, yeah, come on, preach it, man. Listen, I hope it does encourage you to live uh, the life that God has, has designed for you and, um, and to do it in the context of community. Thank you for allowing me the great privilege to be able to speak in uh, to your journey. If this video has been a blessing to you, uh, today, please hit the share button. Let others know uh, what's going on. I'm, I'm in the middle of a series right now, just helping to get you focused on everything that God has for you this year. And it's all leading up to a, a master class that I'm going to be doing starting on January the 23rd called Artists Rise Up. It's a five part live master class. We're going to have a private Facebook group just for that master class. It's absolutely free. You're going to be seeing the um, all of the, uh, you know, advertisements for that and all of the opportunities to, to get on uh, the list for that master class and to become a part of that. Uh, so be watching in your email, be watching on Facebook. You'll definitely see those coming up and you can be a part of that free master class. And um, I'm so excited. We even got this beautiful free uh, downloadable workbook that you can print out and follow along with all the teachings and it's going to be really, really special. And I'd love for you to be a part of it this year with me. All right. Well, hey, hit the share button. Tell somebody that you love them today. Uh, listen, God's got incredible things for you. And um, I can't wait, wait, wait to hear your story and what God does in your life this year as you step into this new reality. All right. I'll see you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.